Join Ed Morris as they continue celebrating their 75 years of excellence. And right now, during the Red Zone sales event, every pre-owned vehicle on the lot is on sale. That's right, rush in today and save with their best pricing, payments, and incredibly low financing. Plus, you can rest assured knowing every pre-owned vehicle is backed by Morse with inspections, reconditioning, and all available warranties. 75 years later, the Ed Morse Auto Group is still saving their customers thousands on the vehicles they love. So make sure your next vehicle is backed by Morse, because if it has their name on it, you have their word on it. And if you need to bring your car in for service, Ed Morse has a price match guarantee on all services, including tires too. Find a location nearest you and go to edmorse.com today. Coming to you from the middle of Kane's country, you're listening to the number one rated football podcast in the Dominican Republic. Oh, la. These are the Orange Bowl Boys. Brought to you by Ed Morse. Join the 1.75 million people that have been backed by Morse. With the price protection promise, Ed Morse will match any competitor's price or refund you up to $7,500. Here's Toast, Roman, and Scoop. Listen, there are many episodes that the three of us are going to look back on when the whole OBB thing is done and dusted that uh, that we're going to be very proud of. And I am 100% confident that this episode going to be right up there with us. Uh, a lot of change has happened at our beloved program over the last number of months, and it has all been spearheaded by one man. One man. One great man. The OBB is honored, absolutely humbled to welcome to the program Mr. Rudy Fernandez. Yes! Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Let's Thank you, go. gentlemen. I, I, oh, we're getting that out of the way early. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. I feel like I've arrived. I finally have arrived as a Canes fan. It's, uh, it's so wonderful, do we. wonderful to be here with you guys. I'm a longtime listener. You know, I love the uh, the bang that Roman, um, you know, uh, started started with because I'm used to sort of seeing his breakdown of plays on social media, and when he gets to the bang, that's usually good news. Yeah. yeah. Uh, although, although we struggle. That, there weren't as many bangs as we as we wanted this last season. Uh, before we get into this, uh, for members of the audience who aren't familiar with you, Rudy, um, what's your background and how did you become President Frank's right-hand person? Sure. Well, I'll tell you, uh, for, for starters, I'll tell you that I, um, I'm a Miami kid at heart. I am someone that moved to, to the, I'm a Cuban American, but I moved to this country when I was ten years old in 1983. Boys, mm-hmm. 1983 is a, you know, a critical year in Kane's uh, history, and I remember moving into Miami, uh, and I was entering fifth grade, and the Canes, you know, win that national championship, and our community came together as a result of uh, of that first championship, and we had a great run. Uh, people think that I, I am traditional. I'm, I'm notorious for uh, for being in a very bad mood when the Canes lose a football game. <laughs> people think that, that that's because I'm an officer of the University of Miami. It has nothing to do with the fact that I'm an officer of the University of Miami. It has everything to do with the fact that my best childhood memories are going to the Orange Bowl with my dad, who uh, you know, who took me to a number of games and cheering the Canes on. So I, I get in a very dark mood when they lose. And, um, you know, uh, and, and it has to, everything to do with my childhood memories. Now, the fact that I'm an officer at the university put me in a unique position to do something about the direction of the program. And, and the last couple of months, and I'm sure we'll get into it, have been a, a roller coaster ride. <laughs> but I am, I'm one of you that, that was put in a position where I, my, my office is just a few feet away from the president's office, and I've been um, whispering in his ear. <laughs> At strategic time during the last few months, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, it's great. Well, loud whispers. Well, yes. well that was we, we, we that's going to segue perfectly because you're right down the hall. But you know what parameters did President Frank give you and Joe at the start of this process? Well, I, I'll tell you one of the, the things. There's two principles. Julio Frank is not a fanatic like we are, uh, but he is a very thoughtful leader of the university. And there's two principles that have guided really all our decisions. The decisions that transpired over the last few months were guided by two principles, and the president set the tone. Number one, we owe it to our student-athletes to put them in positions to succeed, succeed both 
in the classroom and on the playing field. When you recruit someone here, you know, much like when you recruit a world-class violinist or Frost School of Music, which is one of the treasures at the University of Miami, what do you owe that, that kid? You owe that kid an, an opportunity to, to get a great education, and you also owe them the opportunity to develop their talent. If the person is a musician, that means great recital halls, great faculty, you know, the, the very best teacher so that they could develop their talent. If they're a football player, the very best coaching. You know, the very best coaching, you got to invest in facilities. You make a, a sacred promise to that kid and to that family when you recruit them to the University of Miami to put them to, in positions to succeed. So that was a principle that he and I have had a series of discussions on, on this topic for the last, you know, for the last six months. And, um, you know, and, and he takes it very seriously. Even though he's not a fanatic, he wants our kids to succeed. And then the second principle, and this is not going to be a surprise to uh, to you guys because it's in line with your thinking, that you, that split you that we take great pride in, in wearing, well, if you've noticed, we use that split you throughout the university. It's part of our brand. Um, I, I like to say a story, and I've set this story effectively to keyboard leaders for the last several months, uh, that when, um, you know, when Mark Richt had us at 10-0, after we beat Virginia Tech on back-to-back -back weeks, Virginia Tech and Notre Dame, and we're 10 and 0, Julio Frank and I took a trip to Washington, D.C. And we were um, walking the halls of the Capitol. A congressman at the time, Carlos Grubello, gave us a tour of the Capitol. And, and he was, as, he, as we were touring the Capitol, he would introduce us to other members of Congress from other parts of the country, from California, from Texas, from New York. And every one of those members of Congress, boys, you know, as soon as they heard president of the University of Miami, they said, wow, Mark Rick has you at 10 and 0. Congratulations <laughs> to you. And, and I, I kid you not, they would throw up the hands. We're a lot cooler as a university to hang out with when the football team's doing well. And when the football team is doing poorly, we're not as cool to hang out with. So the, 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 the brand is intricately tied to athletics. That means that we have to invest in, 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 in football in particular, but in athletics as a whole. Yeah, and I think that I, I'll bring this up early just because I think it kind of ties in. And the brand and what made the brand, right? Realistically, the football team made the brand that the rest of the university uses. And I think, I think that Toast very eloquently put a nice little open letter together. <laughs> I, I, that, I heard the that letter. addressed. Did you hear the letter? Uh, okay. I heard the letter. So you heard the letter. So here's my follow up question. <laughs> did you play the letter for Dr. Oh, stop. <laughs> no, I did not play the letter. <laughs> but I, I listen. I'm a listener every week. I, I, I find I find your show very, very entertaining. And I'll tell you a particular story. And I don't remember who was scoop or toast. One of you predicted that we would beat Alabama. You know, in that in that opening game, I don't know who wants to own up. To that, uh, that, that was me. That was All me. right, was so me. you scoop you yeah. you scoop. Yeah, picture picture me with my family because my boys and girls and my wife traveled to that <laughs> game, and picture me in a horrible mood going through the TSA line at that Atlanta airport. <laughs> All right, which yes. is a, that, that, that that airport Ooh. is not my favorite airport, and I'm going to try to be polite because I'm an officer of the university, so I got to represent. But I don't like that airport. And we've gotten, you know, we were smacked around on the football field. I'm, I'm in a horrible mood. And my only solace is to, you know, I have, I'm wearing my AirPods, going through the TSA line, and listening to your show, boys. And, Scoop, you went on a tirade <laughs> after that Alabama loss, and you said, listen, I wasn't – you know, I, I I was not truthful to my what my gut oh, was yeah, telling me. Oh yeah, I remember me. that. Yeah, and, and and it was and it and it was uh, it was memorable. I'll never forget. You helped me wait the forty five minutes of my listening to your show. Uh, but no, I, I, I you know the, the the president doesn't listen to the Orange Bowl voice. He probably should. But uh, but well, he doesn't I, need I, to anymore. I do. I, I do, and 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 you guys you guys represent the fan base. I think the university needs to embrace the fan base and get closer to the community. And that's one of the things that I've, I've meditated a lot about over the last few months. All right. So let me ask you this. Um, Amazing. Yeah. During the, during the process, um, there was a lot of talk about the uh, board of trustees and individual members. And all I will say is just this. When, when you and Joe are 
begin this process. How much actual interaction did you have with individual board members during the process, or were they kind of walled off to you too? No, the the, the, the keyboard leaders that you don't you don't accomplish anything as momentous has been has as has been accomplished over the last several months without board support. I mean, our board our board are, are the civic leaders of our community. They listen to the fan base as well because they live in this community and they care for this community. And uh, and and they they were they were you can't we have sixty plus board members toast, so it, it can't be it can't be um, you know you can't socialize any big decision through sixty board members. But the keyboard leaders were part of this, and there and there was you know we were able to 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 make some very big decisions, make decide that we we're going to invest. And then move, you know, move methodically towards our two targets, right? And uh, and and I, I listen. There were some. It was a roller coaster, and there were some tense moments. Um, but uh, but I'm happy as to where we landed. So you mentioned the, the board members and them being involved in, in the whole process. We had heard, maybe cor- incorrect or correct, who knows? Uh, you, you do. That's why I'm asking. Um, <laughs> in relation to Blake James, that he was dismissed without board members being involved. Is that something you could touch on or you can't touch on? Look, I'll tell you, he was, you know, he had been in his role for almost a decade. He was someone that I respect and who we respected. He had, you know, he had, he had the affection of a lot of the leadership and, and the board. Uh, but ultimately dismissals, you know, hirings and firings uh, are, are, you know, are presidential decisions. The president decides who, who reports to, to, to him. And that was a President Frank decision. Uh, obviously, Joe and I played a role in, in analyzing the fact that uh, that we needed to to make a change. And the key board members were were in the loop. Were all sixty board members in the loop before we announced it? No, right? Because things move very very fast. Uh, but, uh, but 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 we felt we needed to make a change in that position and recruit a dynamic leader to to lead that. What we consider is the. A, a third vertical business. The University of Miami is in three businesses: healthcare, higher ed, and and the business of sports. And you got to treat it like a business. Um, and and we needed a dynamic leader. And Blake had done as much as he could for nine years, but it was time for change. Was the decision to let him go made before FSU, or was it made after the loss at FSU? We, we were contemplating a change for for several since Joe and I got involved and, and we began discussing the topic and the challenges with President Frank and, and other keyboard members. We we had began contemplating a change, uh, and you know, and obviously you know after after we came back from Tallahassee, we we figured it was time to 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 be, begin making changes in in any business when you once you decide you know it's time to change, then the, the, then the the, the, the only the only proper answer is that yeah, you should, probably should have made the change yesterday, <laughs> right? So that you know you don't you don't once you decide you got to make a change, you got to do so as as quickly as possible. Yeah, and the other guy, and I'm going to stop asking questions, but the other guys are going to get really mad at me for asking you this. <laughs> but we're still talking about Blake. <laughs> Can you confirm it, or it, deny? You were the one that was left without shoes. Right? Oh, we all no. were. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you were all left without. <laughs> we were going to talk about that. We, that was we were going to address. That. <laughs> Why don't, we, why don't we address this now? Because right, he, yeah. he brought this up, and I, so I'm losing my question. So, so the so the backstory for listeners because then it came up. You know, we we had like a little nickname for Blake James. We called him a shoe stealer. That's that's here and there. But the story was one of the members in the Orange Bowl boys after a Virginia game when it was rainy jumped into a canal and saved a woman's life. <laughs> By that was you, Rome. It was, you. I, I it. It was the guy with the big shield on his shirt. I, I, yeah. But I didn't have this shield on my shirt at the time. So at okay. that, we brought on the athletic director for the University of Miami at the time, and he said, well, you ruined your shoes when you went in there. We'll order you some new shoes. And that never happened. <laughs> it never happened. But I would just like to say from the bottom of my heart, somebody took care of that for us. Somebody... Somebody knew about that, and somebody heard about the promise, and you made the promise right, sir. And I know it sounds silly, and um, but I appreciate it. I really, really, really so, appreciate it. We, so, we all do. We all do. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, I'll tell you, you, you asked about, uh, about my background and how I became chief of staff at the University of Miami. So I, I, spent the, I grew up in Miami. I spent the first, you know, decade of my career uh, in Washington, D.C., in, in – uh, 
in in the in the political realm. Uh, I am a, a um, you know I, I spend you know ten years cutting my teeth in Republican politics. Oh boy, um, you know, and, and I'm not going to get partisan, but in, in Republican politics. And then I returned to Miami. You know, uh, oddly enough, I went from working for Karl Rove in the Bush White House to working for Donna Shalala oh, wow. at the University of Miami. <laughs> so you can imagine, if anyone that knows a little bit about politics, it wow. tells you that I can get along with almost anybody, yeah, right? Yeah, like, obviously. Like, like, like yeah. I, am, I am a pragmatist and I find consensus, uh, but I, I, uh, I came down to, to, uh, to Miami. I've been here for 14 years, the first part under Donna Shalala and then the last seven years under Julio. I'll tell you one rule that I've learned in my career. If you make a promise, make sure you may, you deliver on the promise. Otherwise, it's a, it's a very you know, simple otherwise you get yourself into trouble. So I'll, I'll leave it at that in terms of the, the shoe conversation. No, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm getting back to my question, bro. I don't like you stealing that. And here's my question. Can you confirm or deny that there was a, quote, heated exchange? <laughs> Between the former athletic director and Dr. Frank at the NC State game, that that, that is fake news, and I'll tell you, I've been. I'm glad you asked the question because you heard you you uh, a few weeks ago. You know, someone some one of the, the, the media members disclaimed it, and it, they this the disclaimer was put out there because I spoke to that media reporter. Oh. That, is, that, is, that, is, that, is, that is an urban legend. <laughs> no, no. Manny got it from <laughs> any, Rudy. Any, and anyone, anyone that knows Julio Frank and Blake James, Blake James, I'll say this about Blake. He handled uh, what is very tough professional news, right? When President Frank told him, you know, he, 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 that President Frank intended to make a change with, with a lot of class, a lot of dignity, you know, uh, and, and, and wishing the university nothing but the best. So he handled tough news with a lot of class. And I've never, in my nine years working uh, with Blake, I, I never once heard him raise his voice. And Julio Frank just doesn't raise his voice about anything. You know, it's, sometimes I wish he would. Right, right. I am, <laughs> I am more of a fiery, intense personality. If you would have heard a screaming match between me and someone else, that's, that's probably possible. true, right? But, probably oh, yeah. true. But, uh, but, we were uh, trying to hide your yeah. name. Yeah, but, yeah it, it, but, but, uh, but it wouldn't, it would never happen between Julio and, and Blake. So, Obviously, the the three of us, being Orange Bowl boys, we're we're out there in the social media sphere, and we're apologeticists for the fans. Uh, I want you to help us. There is this media rumor going around that it's the U Health that's funding this athletic repowering. Can can you help us defend that? Because we don't necessarily think that's the truth. That that's that's also fake news, right? That's that's also incorrect. Look, the health system is, is, is run really well. And under Julio Frank's leadership over the last seven years, the health system is, is, is and particularly under Joe Echevarria's credit, you know, uh, leadership, because he's been there for two years. He's a terrific CEO type that spent time in corporate America. And, uh, and his, his connection to the universities, uh, he, he came to the University of Miami during the Lou Saban days. So wow. He's actually a little older. So he remembers. He'll tell you stories. About the loose saving days before Howard, mm -hmm. uh, Burger King and free tickets. Had, correct. He, he he remembers those <laughs> those years. And Joe Joe, uh, you know, spent forty years in corporate America, came back to Miami, was in our board of trustees, and left the board to to help the the administration, and has done a terrific job leading our health system. The health system is doing really well, but that's but the the funding, the investments that we're making in athletics. You know, our our investments that we're making that that will pay for themselves if we're successful. If, and and let me tell you something that you've known intuitively for a long time, but I'm here to confirm: football makes money. Football has always made money, right? Uh, football, even in a half in a half full stadium, you know, uh, is in the is in the black financially, right? Uh, what football does is it subsidizes other sports at the university, right? Like it does in every in most major universities. Um, what what we, you know, we're we're, we're confident about the investments because we've done our business analysis, and um, if we can, you know, have play play before a Hard Rock Stadium that's eighty to ninety percent full uh, or near full capacity, the revenues generated from that. Uh, you know, and the excitement from Golden Canes and the philanthropy generated from that 
will more than cover the Cristobal deal, the assistant coaches deals, the recruitment of uh, Dan Redakovich. I mean, it, it, all those things will be paid from, um, you know, from the, the expected revenues from athletics. So if we, and speaking of Mr. Cristobal, Coach Cristobal, we're going to get into the meat and potatoes here a little bit. If we go 6-0 and to finish this season and we don't lose to FSU, does all of this still happen? You know, I learned a long time ago in the world of politics never to answer hypotheticals, right? You know, that's we did not go 6-0, and right? Look, we, we, I'll tell you this, and, I'll, and it's great that we're doing it via Zoom, and if, I look forward to meeting you guys in person at some point, and, and, and you could ask me the same question, and you'll see in the honesty in my eyes. We like Manny Diaz a lot at the, at the, at the administration level. And I know that he, you know, that the fan base turned on him, but we liked him a lot. He did a lot of great things. Uh, he recruited some kids that played hard for him throughout, right? Uh, but you know, I am a, I am unapologetic about trying to improve the University of Miami. All right, and and the one thing, the one thing that that was our my north star, if you will, throughout the last couple of months was that if we if it, the only the only goal here is you know, improve the University of Miami. What's in the best interest of the University of Miami? What's in the best interest of our football players? And those kids come here wanting to compete for championships. And and and, and if we have an opportunity to hire a unique talent like Mario Cristobal, then we owe it to those kids to do so. You know, we've been criticized by the national media who hates Miami. The national media <laughs> says that we were very cutthroat about the way we – we approach this, you know, and, and, and you're looking, I take responsibility for the way we went about this. Uh, but by the only thing that I cared about, I had to put personal feelings aside, my affection for Manny Diaz aside, my affection for Blake James aside. And the only thing that mattered to me was what's in the best interest of our university and its football program. That's it. And I, and I want to apologize for, for that, you know, my, uh, it, and, and I'm glad to see that Manny Diaz, has has landed on his feet and he's got and he's got a very very good job. I think he will be successful. I, I like Manny and respect Manny a lot, but we had to take advantage of a unique opportunity. Oh, go ahead, Rob. Simple question. I mean, I hear it, but why now? Why all of a sudden is it right now? Why why now? And the, the coaching change? Why this revamped? enthusiasm to build like the program because for the last you know two decades you you obviously heard the criticism but there was like something that probably welled up inside of you that said you know what the time is now We're, we owe it to these kids so, so I'll, I'll tell you i'll tell you this i i tend to um I, i'm a thinker right i reflect a lot on on, on things and and will noodle issues for a while a key moment moment for me, because this happened, you know, people think it happened over a three-month period. The thinking on this has evolved over the last two or three years. And um, during moments of darkness, you can, you can gain great clarity, right? You, you could see things really clearly during some of your darkest times. The darkest moment of this football program, certainly I'm not as old as my friend Joe. I'm 48. The darkest loss, the, the worst loss in program history – was that F against FIU, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that that loss against FIU uh, was—I mean, I was upset for like three weeks after that loss to FIU because I have a lot of friends at FIU and they were <laughs> they didn't shut up, no, it. and they deserved it. They did, they, 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 they were good with it. Yeah, they celebrated like it was a yes. Super Bowl the day after. But, but, but go back to—I don't know how many of you were in the stadium at, at you know, in sacred ground, right? But because that Marlins Stadium is the old site of the Orange Bowl. In sacred ground, you know, understand one thing. FIU has five, time the, five times the number of undergrads that the University of Miami does, right? So they have a lot more alumni in the community. It was a home game for them. And yet we played poorly. And yet 80% of the fans in that bowl uh, that, that were not, not – not because there were students here, not because they work here. 80% of the fans in that, in, that, in that stadium were cheering for the University of Miami. So one thing that, that was very obvious to me is that – the University of Miami football program owns an important share of people's heart in the community. And when you can have an emotional connection to a community, you got to protect it and you got to salvage it. And it doesn't last forever, boys, because I, 
I got to tell you, I grew up with a Dan Marino poster over my bed, and I don't. The Dolphins have lost me. Like I, 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 I hardly, I hardly watch. I mean, I don't watch most games now. So the Dolphins have lost that share of the, of, of this person's heart. Uh, I, I didn't want the same thing to happen to the University of Miami, so we needed to act and act and act now. Uh, we were talking to Rudy Fernandez. So let me ask you this. Um, during this whole process, rumors galore out there about who was going to be interviewed for the AD. And if rumors are correct, we heard that both Zoe and Gino got interviewed. So first, if you could confirm that. But second, if they did, how difficult was it for you? Because you've talked about how big of a fan you are. To set aside the fanboy aspect when you're interviewing two insanely huge legends from the program for the next gig. So, so I, I'll, I'll say it this way. During the last, since President Frank put me out there as, as the, his key advisor, and along with Joe, that, w- that were going to be involved in these decisions, I have talked to and, and befriended you know, a lot of the legends of the program that I grew up cheering for, right? Um, I- including those two gentlemen. Uh, you know, we interviewed five or six um, uh, candidates for the position, but as soon as we talked to Dan, uh, we we felt Dan was was some you know had had been around greatness, uh, has seen it, has helped build it at Clemson, was also at LSU during um, Nick Saban's time at LSU, was at Georgia Tech. We we felt this guy is is the best athletic director in the country. And think for a minute. I, I want you to to appreciate for a minute how, and you know, I hope your audience is. Uh, and I hope there's no moms that are going to, you know, have issues with the <laughs> language that I'm going to use. But how ballsy was it at the University of Miami to try to poach the coach from, you know, from the University of Oregon, i.e., Nike Inc., right? You know, Phil Knight's coach, and at the same time to try to poach the 800-pound gorilla. You know, the, the, the athletic director from the 800 pound gorilla in our conference the last 10 years, right? That was pretty. Oh, yeah. That was, that, that, there, was, there was a lot of swagger to those two movies. You reached for the stars, um, Rudy. You reached you for know, the stars. Look, he's, he's, we did. he's we gloating, did. and I, lo- yes, I enjoy I love this. It. I love it. The, the, no, Thank I'm, you. I'm enjoying it because I was. <laughs> yes. Listen, that weekend before, Scoop, I was on the verge of a nervous breakdown, right? Because, <laughs> you know, when you swing for the fences, I could have fallen on my face, right? Uh, but we were we, 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 we were able to to execute what we believe is, I mean recruit what we believe is the best athletic director in the country, and th- we think Mario Cristobal is is a, a uh, top five top ten coaching talent and one of the best recruiters in the country. So we were thrilled to do so. The University of Miami of ten years ago would not have tried to do that. The administration would not have tried to do that. But we we we, we made a determination, and, and I'll go back to something I said earlier. You got to, in this world of intercollegiate athletics, if you're going to be in, you need to be all the way in. And you got to treat it like a business. And recruiting the right people to lead that business is, is critical. So you, we just had early National Signing Day, right? And you almost, you almost see him exactly like, you know, Coach Cristobal, where you're, you get the verbal confirmation, but you need to see the, the dotted line. When you finally swung for the fences and you connected and they signed on the dotted line, what did you do? What was your reaction? Listen, I, I, I got some sleep. That, that last weekend was brutal. Rome, that, that last weekend was brutal. Um, it was it was tense because the window, Mario was very disciplined, and, and I like discipline. Uh, that's one of the things that, that I, I, I find very exciting about, about him as coach. Uh, he was very disciplined about the fact that he was not going to engage in any conversations with anyone until after the Pac-12 championship game, Right. And uh, so the window to, to negotiate with him, and keep, keep in mind there's a three-hour difference between Eugene and Miami, uh, it opened up Saturday morning, and it was going to end, you know, by, by Monday we needed to make a determination as to what we were going to do. Uh, so it was a very compressed time window. We were, so we were, we were negotiating with Mario's agent that weekend. Uh, we were also trying to recruit uh, Dan, to, you know, to, uh, as athletic director. Uh, and all those things happen in a very compressed time window. So I, uh, you know, I, I rested. I got some sleep. My wife, I'll tell you a funny story. On Sunday night, I'm on a FaceTime call with, with Mario. And, um, you know, and we're, we're you know, we're ha- hammering this out. And, and it's an hour FaceTime call. That was 10 p.m. Miami time. All right. My my wife walks into, we have four children. The, our two oldest who are twins go to Palmetto Senior High School. 
and uh, and she walks into into my into our master bedroom where I'm having the FaceTime call with Mario from, and she's trying to get my attention. And and you know I don't know how many of you are married, but you know <laughs> all of us, you yeah. know women yeah. they could they could be very they could be very aggressive <laughs> on trying to get your attention. She's trying to get my attention, and I'm talking to Mario Crystal on a FaceTime call that's very critical to the university. So I ignore her. I can be very tunnel vision, right? I, I ignore her, and she takes to writing a message on paper, and the message on the paper, and I'm not very proud of it. This is going to – I don't know how many women listeners you have. This is going to drive my numbers way down. But she writes down, listen, uh, it, you know, Rudy, you know, there are rumors, unsubstantiated rumors, so they don't believe it's credible. There are rumors – of a of a of a shooting threat at Palmetto the next day, right? Uh, but but she said they're unsubstantiated. I need the number for a friend of ours who can verify whether the rumor is true or not. I didn't say hold on a second, Mario. I you know I simply sort of from my phone texted her the number and continue talking to Mario at the same time, right? <laughs> You know, does, I, does he uh, know that story? You know, I, I haven't told that story to Mario yet. But then my, my wife, my wife, my wife is all in as well. My wife meets Mario at an event a couple of days ago. He he was nice enough to after after signing day uh, to attend at a, an event at, at the president's home for the holidays, and I introduced my my wife to Mario, and and my and my wife was was turning you know red as I I said this story because after after we. Sign Mario, and I'm finally resting after a long several weeks where I was very absent from the house. I ask her, "Honey, I'm trying to get back in, in her good side, right?" So I say, "Honey, what do you want for Christmas? What you know? Do you want earrings? You know what? What jewelry can I can I buy in order to, to get myself out of the doghouse?" And she tells me, "You know what I really want for Christmas? Anything, Rudy?" He's like, "Yeah, anything. I want Mario Cristobal." to be the speaker for an event at Nicholas Children's Hospital. She works at Nicholas Children's oh, Hospital. Awesome. So her, her request was having Mario speak at some event. So I sent this story to Mario, and he was cracking up as she was turning red. Uh, but, no, I, I, I rest it. Look, I'm a big believer that we're not celebrating. I, I am happy that we got our targets. But I'm not celebrate, celebrating until we're in the college football playoffs. There we that's, go. That's the way I, I well, see this. Well, if she needs some jewelry, uh, Rudy, I, there's a couple like chains and turnover chains. Maybe you could probably <laughs> get her. I, I'm not. I don't know if Mario's going to keep that. You got access to it. Maybe she's a big turnover chain fan. You got a couple to choose from. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I listen. I asked Coach Cristobal after we signed him, and you know, I, I, it's his decision. We'll see what he does, but. But one thing that was not a good look was wearing the turnover chain Losing. when you're down thirty yeah. to Alabama. I, I don't know. That, I mean, that's 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 probably some something that that Manny would change if he had to do it all over. Who told you first? Who told you yes first? Because I think was was we got the um, yes for, for, we got the yes from from Cristobal first. Okay, okay. And then Dan was was that predicated shortly, on what shortly, Mario had said? Short, shortly thereafter, the two men wanted to you know Dan. Wanted to make sure that he he has great respect for Mario, and Mario has great respect for Dan. But you know they had not worked together before, so they wanted to make sure they they could they connected. Uh, Rudy, obviously there was a lot of um, <clears throat> whether it be fake news or misinformation that was being put out during this whole process. You're a DC guy, so first, how did it compare to your political leakings and stuff? And also, do you have any idea, or have you lim- kind of narrowed down where it might have come from? So. First of all, to, to navigate this successfully, you needed a little luck, and uh, and you need and I you, I used every ounce of my political abilities and my, my political skills in order to do it. But it was very uh, taxing. The rumors, you know, the rumors are, are, are always an issue, and you never know where, where they're coming from. What I, you know, people, some some of of us in the administration and the board, you know, were dismayed to to see all the 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 bad publicity for a couple of days involving the rumors, you know, I see the positive in it. The reason there was a media frenzy, a social media frenzy over the decisions that we were in on our way to making is because people care very deeply about the program. Mm. You know, you don't, you don't see people, you know, the, the reason people are so hungry for information is because the passion for the brand is very, very strong. So I, I always saw the, the glasses as half full on, on it. Uh, it tested me in ways that I, I my, one of my jobs in, in D.C., I manage the southwest part of the country. You know, think Texas, Arizona, Nevada, Colorado, those, those, New Mexico, those states in the southwest. 
I was the the campaign manager for the re-election of Bush Cheney in 04 in those states. Uh, it felt like like I, I was a week out from election day in that presidential election. That's the last time that I was that stressed. Wow. About something because because I um I think I have it here. You know, going into the weekend, which and and and, and I told the story to Manny Navarro, so he's reported on it. But going into the weekend, as as that Saturday morning started, you know, I sort of, um, you know, I sort of in a piece of paper to make sure that the the roller coaster of the weekend did not did not um, did not deter me from the goal. Right, I sort of, you know, wrote in a piece of paper. You can see it here: M <laughs> D or M plus D. You know, I needed to either land Mario, land Dan, or land Mario plus Dan which is obviously what ended up happening, because if I didn't achieve that, you guys were going to roast the <laughs> University of Miami Morning Boys, right? So, so, no. so I, knew, I knew I needed to Us? accomplish one of those no, three. we would never do such a thing. No, never. No. no. I mean, uh, toast, maybe. Wow. Toast maybe there would have been an open letter to Rudy. <laughs> toast would have been open. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Holy God. So if you, if, you, if you had to be jettisoned back to D.C., whose couch you crashing on up there? I have several friends. You know, some of them, some of them are Republican still. Some of them have changed parties, but I've kept the, I've kept the friendships. Uh, guys, you want to do the speed round thing with them? Oh uh, yeah. This all right, is all right. So, funny. so here's the over. Do we oh, have, boy. we have. Um, these are just simple with all the misinformation that was put out there and other stuff. We just want to run through some of these things, and you can just say yes, no, no comment, or true or false, whatever. Um, but we'll just go around in a circle here. So the first one is: Was this process a shit show? No, no. And the, one? the fact that the fact people assume that just because they're not getting news or regular reports, uh, they, they they assume that nothing's happening. There's a lot of work that was happening behind the, the scenes. If, if any, I, I give I love analogies. You know, picture two uh, stealth attack planes that are you know attacking their target, and for a while, people you know they're stealth. You, you, people don't know what's happening behind the scenes, but just because you're not. Getting regular reports doesn't mean that we're not working on it. True. Okay, before we get back into yeah. that, that made me think of something. So Mario's name was the whole the whole us going after Mario or you going after Mario towards the end of that week, Thursday, Friday, I'm sure. Were you unhappy with the fact that that news got out prior to when you guys really had a chance to go after him? I, I always, as the political operative that I that, that I sort of cut my teeth, being a former political operative, yeah, I, I always prefer to keep things a secret. Gotcha. Like if you would yeah. approach me two months ago about about speaking to you on the record, I, you know, like I or off the record, I, I prefer to fly stealth. Gotcha. Yeah, I was. I mean, I think we're all a little bit like, oh man, like it would have been so nice to have been a surprise to everybody. But anyway, sorry, I digress. Next one in the speed round. This is for the highly esteemed reporter, Mr. Brett McMurphy. Do you know if clusterfuck has a hyphen? <laughs> I love that. That was a tweet of yours, I think. Well, he said it. <laughs> no, he, no, no, Brett he McMurphy said, said it. We just retweeted it, yeah. He, <laughs> even, even, even though the McMurphy, the one that really, Yahoo Sports, you know, yeah, 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 that Yahoo Sports reporter, mm -hmm. a couple of months ago, I don't know if you've all read the story, but a couple of months ago, he, you know, one of the reporters, I, I think the guy's the first name is Peter, said that, uh, you know, look, the, the, there's a huge coaching carousel. You know, Michigan State had signed Tucker, and all these conflicts were beginning to happen. And they said, look, there's going to be more coach coaching uh, openings than good coaches available. So someone's going to be left, you know, holding the bag or, or let, in a game of musical chair, someone's going to be left without a chair. And they have this lengthy piece as to how crazy it is and the crazy contracts, et cetera. And then the guy, this is like two or three months ago, says, well, and the, our most likely, you know, if we had to guess as to who's going to totally mess this up, it's Miami, <laughs> right? Because they just fired, you know, the highly respected uh, athletic director, uh, their highly uh, respected athletic director. And, um, you know, and they have two, you know, Two, two senior administrators and business types managing this process and Miami stock in the past and it's not such a great job anymore, et cetera. 
that was bulletin board material for for me. Uh, nice. So I uh, so I, I I kept that very much in mind as we were working towards this. Next question in the speed round: Should FSU give Mike Norvell a ten year extension? Absolutely. <laughs> Can I contribute to that? I'm I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm into that. I'm into that. <laughs> I don't want whatever you know what I don't want Rome. I don't want Deion Sanders. <laughs> right, yes. the next yeah, next we don't want that. <laughs> I don't think Florida State wants Deion Sanders right now either. <laughs> All right, next one. They'd get over um, that real quick. Was anyone offered the AD gig before Dan Radakovich? No. Okay. No. All right, next one. Were there ever any back channel communications with any other P5 head coach? No. More difficult fan base to deal with, UF or FSU? Oh, that's a good. That's a tough one. You know, I I um I, I would say FSU. Mm-hmm. I would say FSU because you know when I when I became a fan, you know, it was past. You know, the Gators had stopped playing us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? They they were they were ducking us. They weren't playing us. So if you're not playing them, they're not that difficult to deal with. So yeah, the Seminoles. I mean, I still my my sons. I have a ten year old boy and an eight year old boy. And you know, the, my son is a big fan of uh, oh, what's the Dal- of uh, Dalvin Cook, mm-hmm. right? Who's with I, I guess with the Vikings. And I was like, oh, son, you should have seen Dalvin Cook eat up our canes. <laughs> yes. you, know, you, know, yes. you know, thank God, thank God, you weren't alive for that because those were painful seven painful straight games. So no, FSU, FSU was is tough. For All me. right, what was the average number of Cuban coffees you had during each day of the search? Less than the sixteen that Mario reportedly t- tries to drink a day, but I but I had four or five uh, cafecitos. All right, but now keep on that debate because he brought up both. Are you uh, B- Bustelo or Pilon? Which one? I'm a Bustelo. Guy. All right, cool. Bustelo. All right, all right. All right. Yeah. I think we know the answer to this, but true or false, you were aware that we called Blake James a shoe stealer. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I listen. I listen. So I'm aware. Blake, Blake is a Blake is a good man. Yes, yes, all right, yes. Right, 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 yes. Yeah, okay. Pass, right. Blake pass. is a good man, and he's he was be, on the and, show. Yeah, okay, good. And, and he and he's going to land on his feet. Mm-hmm. He's respected. He's got one or one. You know, he's got a couple more chapters to his career. <clears throat> so Mario, uh, Miami comes back in a national relevance because of these moves, and you are called the primary architect of it all, and you're featured on a U Part Three. Are we happy? You know, Billy Corbin and our our friends, even though it's you know many times many times he drives me he drives me crazy. Uh, but I, you know, I, I, I he calls me like two weeks before this all went down when the rumors started flying, and I said, Billy, you know, in a few years, I, you know, I, I'm not going to talk about the stories now, but in a few years, you know, I may have enough material for you to to do <laughs> yes. a YouTube documentary. Yes, sir. So listen, I am a, I am a, I am passionate about three things. If you want to get to know me. I, I there's three things that I'm highly passionate about: my family, you know, my my kids and my wife. South Florida, the South Florida community, and Canes football. Mm. I am very passionate about Canes football. It's like one of the OBB boys broke into the castle. That's the Ash Building here, the administration, <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, and, and was you know, I was I was representing the fan base. Look at that. But I'm I'm you, very passionate about Canes football. But you are. Yeah. Uh, and, and right now, you're proving it. You you are one of the fans, Rudy, and we appreciate it. And, and as a fan, this is a fan question. If you were a player position on the football team, what position are you playing? Linebacker. I, I like to we need linebackers. We need linebackers. We need linebackers. We need linebackers. I like to hit. Look, I am very honest, and, and so is Julio Frank, by the way. I should, I should say one of the great things about President Frank – and and I, Shalala recruited me here. I'm I'm friends with Donna to this day, but I, you know, you know, I, I am thankful that Julio Frank was our president during this whole period because Julio knows what he knows, and he knows what he doesn't know. Yeah. And he and, and on things that he's not an expert on, he's willing to take advice from others. By the way, same thing applies to Joe and and to me. I'm not an X's and O guy. Uh, Rome, you know, I, I I love seeing your breakdown of plays throughout the season. You know, I, I couldn't do it, and I I, I understand maybe seventy five percent of what you're explaining on, on that breakdown. I'm not a nexus and all guy. You know, what I do believe in is recruiting talented people in in, in Dan and in Mario to make those decisions for us. Right? You got to hire the very best possible people. And now that that we've hired them, I'm going to sort of get back to senior administration. I will continue to be a partner to Dan, 
because uh, obvi obviously we got to mobilize resources to make sure that they have the resources they need to be successful. Uh, but uh, but you got to know what you know and know what you don't know. I got to think, and you just brought up Joe again, and uh, it, it's you can't mention enough how th this was a two man job. I'm guessing after a process like this, you and Joe incredibly close at this stage, or were you already very close beforehand? We were close before. We were close before. He is. He's a. He's. A, if, if I have a mentor within the administration, it's Joe Echevarria. He's more behind the scenes guy, so he gladly, you know, prefers to to stay behind the scenes. Um, and I'll, and I'm the chief communications officer for the university, so it makes sense for me to the, to, to be the one that engages the fan base and, and the external community. But yeah, he and I are incredibly close and continue to do so. I spent some time with him this morning. Uh, we continue uh, to talk on an everyday basis, not just on athletics, but on other university business. Do you have a favorite memory in the Orange Bowl? Oh, in the Orange Bowl. Uh, the trough urinals is no, an acceptable the, answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just my, you know, I attended, I, you know, I attended probably, you know, you know, you know, my parents could afford to take me to one, one to two games a year. Right. And, and my, and my parents, cause my parents were lower middle class. Right. And, uh, and the memories of, of going to with my dad and my mom, who who knew that I was very passionate about football, but uh, but and 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 really sort of struggled to to get us there and get us tic tickets and sitting in in the bleachers, and you know I guess my favorite memory is just looking at my dad and my mom in some games where there was I think it was a night game with a huge downpour, it was it was raining, and I wouldn't want to leave the seats like they wanted to go undercover, and it, and I didn't want to leave the seats and uh, and they stuck by me. Right, they stuck by me, and the sacrifices that parents make uh, to 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 do that is is very special. I always think about going to games with my dad. That's that's what that's what's meaningful to me. And this, by the way, this investment that we're making in athletics, it's important to the university, and I I am convinced that it will pay dividends for the university, both uh, you know reputationally and 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 financially, and it's the right thing for student athletes. But it's also the right thing to do by our community. You know, like I think Rome in a recent show, you said one of you guys said that, uh, you know, this UM football brings together a very diverse community mm -hmm. uh, together. And that's important. There's very few things that uh, that bring that bring our community together, like like sports and particularly Canes football. Now, you brought up the Orange Bowl. Uh, so I, you know, and there's a faction of fans right now out there that are talking about a potential new home. And Raddy mentioned it too, that, you know, maybe exploring those options. Is that a real possibility on your end? I know it's coming from the outside, but what are your thoughts on that? <clears throat> so we haven't had any conversation. No one, no one, I know there's a lot of people talking about it externally. And no one has talked to anyone in the, in the administration about it yet. If, if they approached us, obviously, I owe it to the University of Miami to always entertain options that I feel will improve the, the standing of the university or the football program. Uh, we have 11 years left on a lease at Hard Rock. I think Hard Rock is a, is, is a great facility to play in. And, and one of you, I think it was one, in one of your shows, you made, the, you, you made a point that I agree with, which is in, in thinking about stadium locations – would it be better to be closer to to, to the campus? Sure, but you got to think about the fact that we draw fans from from all over South Florida, not just from you know from 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 uh, from Coral Gables or from South Miami, right? So I, I think we ought to take that into account and be very very careful about that decision. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, look, Hard Rock, and especially at night, any time after, uh, well, we moved our seats, so they're better now. But you're but at night. And the more you win, the more night games you have. That place is electric at night. So for me, I see no point in going to a different stadium. I'm closer to this one. I just that place is so cool and it's so well put together. And they did such a great job with the renovation. Uh, I stand a little on the outside on this. I know a lot of people would prefer a new stadium and have it smaller. Just we've been saying it for years. Just tarp off sections of the top, make it a fifty, you know, thousand. Person stadium, open it for big or just win and sell out. Yeah, <laughs> if you win and sell out, 
if, if you win and sell out, the place is pretty special. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, I, I think it's a good experience if we're winning. I mean, it was Highsmith was on your show a few months mm-hmm. ago. You know, and he he understood. The, you know, the team has always understood. Hey, you got to win. Miami's a town town where if you win, the town will come out and support you. My favorite memory in the f- almost fifteen years that I've been part of the the senior administration here. My favorite memory at, at Hard Rock was Trajan and Bandy returning yeah. that touchdown. Yeah, absolutely. You know that that pick six <laughs> yeah. for a touchdown, right? That plays with electric. Deafening. Mm-hmm. You know, deafening. So I, I think it's if if we have that type of team, uh, you'll generate that type of excitement. All right, let's uh, do a little ego question here for the three of us. You talked about your favorite Kane moment. Do you have a favorite OBB moment? Ooh, OBB moment. Listen, I I um, I first connected. I don't know if you went back to with Rome via via Twitter. You know, you know, several months ago, almost a year ago, because I really enjoy the time that he puts into breaking down plays and analyzing and educating fans like like me. Uh, you know, I the Alonso Heif interview was great, but 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 I think my favorite moment was the recent. I think it was the last podcast with Joaquin Gonzalez. Oh yeah, I've, I, I, I've become friends with Joaquin, and I tweeted this out uh, after the interview. I, I I replayed it a couple of times so I could get the right quote. But when he <laughs> said, "Listen, when the Canes are winning big games." You know, women start looking prettier. <laughs> the food starts tasting better. Life is generally better. Is. I, I tweeted out: few people understand South Florida better than Joaquin. Yeah. And 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 uh, and then he also made that that uh, that great comment. He had another great one liner about like, yeah, South Florida is you know is, is known for having you. You have a two hundred thousand dollar house. With a three hundred thousand dollar Lamborghini parked in front of it, he has yes. a great <laughs> understanding for South Florida. Joaquin was terrific as a guest. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It was the third time we've had yeah. him. He's, I mean, he's always so much fun. Yeah. It's now my favorite cane. This is, I thought this might be part part of the rapid fire. My favorite cane of all time, however, I mean, Joaquin, Joaquin gets an honorable mention, but Ed Reed, you know, yeah. Ed Reed is oh. my favorite cane of all time. I, I even met Michael Irvin and told him. Yeah. They're interconnected because uh, you, you know yes. Joaquin said dominate. So how? That's yes. right. Well, that's right. Yes. So how is it having Ed around the program? That like when he was brought in, and you're like, oh my god, this Ed Reed. All right. So the cool moment, of the, one of the coolest moments of the last couple of months was that you know, in order to do my due diligence, I, I was listening to as many people who truly know football as I, as I could in order to to help the president make these decisions. I was I was getting input from everybody. And I spent on back-to-back days, I spent six hours with Ed Reed, three hours on a Friday and three hours on a Saturday. And he is the coolest guy around, right? Like he is, I don't know if you guys have spent significant time around Ed. So he shows up, this is like mid-morning, and he shows up uh, at the you know the home of, of one of our trustees. It was a trustee, myself, and Ed, right? And Because we didn't want to meet in a public place because he's a celebrity, right? And so, so we meet there. And, and he he brings cigars. Oh, big time! <laughs> and, and you know, and I haven't smoked cigars in, in years. But I, but uh, but he but how many times are you going to have an opportunity to smoke a cigar with the goat? <laughs> right. So so it was ten in the morning, guys. And he says, "You want a cigar?" So I said, "Yeah, man. I, I got. Of course, I want a cigar." So I smoked a cigar with him on Friday, and then we met again on Saturday, and I smoked another cigar. So on two, on back to back days. You know, I I smoke cigars with Ed Reed. That that I will remember until I'm, you know, if I get to be 90 years old, I'll remember smoking cigars. See, I'm Ed. thinking after oh that God. first cigar, it just passed into another dimension. It, it, it never changed. You you were there the whole time. It, it, you didn't come right. back Saturday. It was it was just one cigar. You were living in the moment. <laughs> that may that may be it. That may be it. That uh, may be it. We, we, so no, there have been some very special moments. You you bring up Ed Reed, and let me bring this because obviously you're a diehard Kane fan. We that's well established now. There's a debate among the fan base about how what we should do with number 26. Should 26 be retired or should it be a tribute number that you were, that, that is earned by like an upperclassman? Do you have any feelings on Sean Taylor's 26? Retire you got to re, you got to retire, retire 26. It? Yeah. And I, and I'm going to be a major proponent okay. of that. Yeah. Awesome. I I will, I will I will be leading that 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 charge. Excellent. I think we should retire 26. I, no, it should not be I, I don't want to run the risk of 
of of twenty six. You know, not not not, not I, running I mean, the wrong way. Yeah, big work. yeah. <laughs> you get there. I, I almost there. think there's two things that could potentially be retired, but I, you know, there's the there's the turnover chain, and then there's twenty six. And I think as Canes fans. Uh, it's it's all on board. Twenty six gets retired well, the, before the, the chains do, and, and and it's euphoric. The tw- twenty six needs to be retired. The and look, the turnover chain had its moment, right? But I um, it was a lot of fun in twenty twenty uh, seventeen, I guess, sixteen, when, seventeen, yeah, twenty seven, twenty sixteen, twenty seventeen. But I, I, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Mario goes in another direction. I wouldn't either. Look, one of my favorite. We've had Fowler on here a couple times, and one of my favorite calls ever was that bandy pick six when Fowler's screaming, break out the chain again. I mean, because it was the fourth, third, third or fourth pick of the first half. I mean, so, yeah, it served its purpose, and it got everybody talking. And, everybody, look, everybody then replicated it, right? What they always say is, is you know. Uh, Imitation, greatest form of flattery. Whatever is the best. That's right. That's what I meant to say. Thanks, Toast. <laughs> we'll slow it down. I'm on medication. Look, I like Dan, Dan in the press conference a couple of days ago said something that uh, – resonates with me he says look the, the fun is in the winning yeah you know it's this this place will be become a lot of fun if we're if we're winning uh so uh so that's that's what we got to get to and and what i like I, I said it i said it before but i'll say it again you know we have one of the 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 true jewels of the university of miami health system is a guy named steven nimer steven nimer was recruited uh from memorial sloan kettering in new york and he's led the Sylvester Cancer Center for the last 10 years. And the Sylvester Cancer Center does amazing work. And it's, and it's become one of the best cancer centers in the country under his leadership. Uh, we do a lot of work with firefighters, as, as, you, as you probably know, Rome, because, you know, firefighters, you know, we're getting a higher incidence of cancer. And, and our, our, our researchers worked uh, to try to understand why and, and things like, Shower within an hour was 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 policy that that came out of that. Uh, but Neymar has this great line. He says, "Look, you know, sometimes you have people that um, that have never been around excellence, so they they could they, they they may be looking at something that's mediocre and think that that it's very good, and um, and that applies to 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 certainly to 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 the to the business world, to the university as a whole, but that applies to the world of sports as well." What I what really excites me, and the reason we worked so hard and have invested to get Mario Cristobal here, and to get Dan Radakovich here, is that th- both of those guys have been around excellence. They know what greatness looks like, and uh, and knowing what greatness looks like, they know how to build it, and, and I think they're going to make a great team. Agreed. Agreed. Listen, Rudy, you have uh, you've been here with us for an hour now, and you have answered every single question, and you've answered them all well. Um, seriously, I, guys, do you have anything else you need to, I, we've pretty much hit everything that was on the sheet. Uh, I mean, we, we have, we have two pages of questions here. Wow. And we got on, we got on before you came on and we said, this is way too, this is way too much information. <laughs> so we get, we got to like get rid of, we asked every <laughs> one of them. Good, 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 good. Well, everyone on the sheets. I, that is, that is awesome. I, I I'm looking for more. Me. All right, so let me ask you this. I don't want it to end. Let me, let, me, let me put you on the spot, then, because this is we do this to all Kane fans. As a Kane fan, in your mind, do you have a timetable for when you'd like to see us be able to make the playoff? Yeah, I, I would like, for, in order for this investment to pay off, in, in my mind, you know, we should be a, pl- a playoff team within the next three to five years. Boom, there we go. Three, Boom, three bang, whatever you want. Yeah. You know? And, and, and my view, and this is a fan, you know, Mario may say, you know, Rudy doesn't know the first thing about what it takes to, you know, to get a team prepared for this. And, and he would be right, right? But as a fan, you know, I, you know, I, I think we ought to be winning the Coastal more often than not. Not once every 16 years, once in, the, in 16 years, but, you know, you know, five, six, seven times every decade. That's, that's what. That's what I. That's what I. Uh, that's what I expect as a fan. Well, the, All right, you know, I, I'm sure I'll get a an email from Mario. Hey, sh- shut the hell up! <laughs> <laughs> hey, if Mario's well, listening, to this, that, email, that means he's listening. I was yeah. gonna say he'd have to be listening. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. I, I, pr- I presume he's I can't even get him to follow us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so no, I, I think that's. I, I I believe that within the next five years, I would love to sort of see us be a college football playoff team. This this isn't going to be a question, but I, I just kind of want to give you a platform because you've obviously expressed yourself wonderfully and as a fan. 
But from your position of leadership, what would you like? What's the advice you want to give the fans? What would you want to tell them? Like the floor is yours. Fans, listen up, get close. I'm about to address you. What would you say? Well, n- number one, we appreciate your passion for 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 the University of Miami and for our football program, our other sports program. Uh, we, you know, my my pledge to you as a, as a fan is that we're not going to take you for granted. Uh, you know, we are going to, you know, to uh, to listen to you. We want to, you know, bring you into the to, to the Hurricane family. Your support means the world to us. And uh, and uh, give give Mario some time because this things don't get built overnight, and he, we're going to have to be patient. I think the one thing to um, the one thing that I this trend for, of 10, 10 year deals uh, probably is going to is going to is going to force institutions here and elsewhere to be patient, right? To be patient with their coaches. And it takes time. I don't, I don't think the coaching carousel is good. You haven't asked um, – I mean, one of my number one concerns this last couple – this last month, certainly, was if if we had an opportunity to bring in a unique talent like Mario Cristobal to, to lead our program. And uh, and, and I, I think it's worth mentioning, you know – we we uh, we have a lot of affection for Manny Diaz, but Mario, because of his success in Oregon, because of the four years he spent under Nick Saban, because of the fact that he built an FIU program from non-existence, uh, you know, was 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 someone, and and his intricate ties to Miami was someone that was a, you know, we be, we believe was was an opportunity too good to pass off, right? You bring him in. But you now we have to we have to we have to be patient. We have to give them the time to to do things right. I think that's that's what I would emphasize to fans. Give them give them time. You know, show up show out buy, show, show up buy tickets. You know, buy tickets show up because those kids when you're recruiting kids, a, a half stadium half filled stadium does not help us. Uh, you know, and, and and I'm just thankful for people's support. Have you guys seen an uptick in season ticket sales in the last seventy two hours to a week? We, we we've seen a tremendous uptick in calls. Okay, we haven't rolled out. You know, we're we're about to sort of send out messages and open up. Uh, you know, begin selling. Okay, but we have we haven't begun sales yet. I know that you saw the wolf video because <laughs> you liked the wolf video, <laughs> and we have we have officially realized that we made a mistake. You, are the you're wolf. the wolf. Yeah, you're the wolf. <laughs> I appreciate. I, I I love Pulp Fiction. So that was a great. Uh, yeah, we do too. That was a great. That was a great clip. That was Looked a great like, clip. Oh my god! Yeah, that was I, a great I, clip. We screwed that up, but it looked <laughs> well, good. The video was. You good. know, the number of the funny stuff in social media. The the, the wolf. By the way, if you redo it, I'll accept it. <laughs> you know, my kids will enjoy it at some point. See, it, but uh, but uh, but the but the other thing, the other. The, the, I'll tell you a funny story. When I started dating my wife, you know, my wife is from Cincinnati, Ohio. And she and she's the youngest of four of four uh, siblings, four kids, and and she's playing golf with her sister, with her older sister, and and she tells her sister, hey, "I just met a guy. I started dating this guy. What's his name? Rudy Fernandez. All right. So, so the sister, while my 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 wife is teeing off at, uh, in the eighth or ninth hole, her sister takes to to, to uh, Google and Google's Rudy Fernandez." And Rudy, if you Google Rudy Fernandez, the, the Rudy Fernandez that comes up as a Spanish basketball player that was in the NBA <laughs> for a few years. So she's like, oh, my God, you're dating an NBA player. And he's like, no, not that Rudy Fernandez, right? <laughs> so one of the – so and then and then the, the, the sister that, that, uh, that uh, said that, you know, when she was the maid of honor at our wedding, so she says that story about me not being the NBA player, right, uh, as part of her – you know her toast at our wedding. Uh, you know, eleven, twelve years ago. Uh, but uh, but I had a lot of fun with her a couple of weeks ago because one of the many things, you know, funny memes that were that was put out on social media was uh, my face on an NBA player dunking over someone else, and and then they put a little tag, you know, that the person being dunked on is the the national media. So it's Rudy Fernandez dunking on the national media, and I I tw- I sent a message to my sister in law and I said. 
you see, I'm finally that. Oh, that's great. Oh, uh, so, yeah. listen, Rudy. Twitter is special. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, for coming on the podcast, but also just for everything that you just pulled off. You have no idea. You're, you're a legend for to Canes fans everywhere for the rest of eternity. Uh, you are that guy, and we can't thank you enough. And the fact that you came on here as your first podcast interview and that you're a listener uh, just humbles us. And thank you so very, very much. Well, two two things. Uh, big big fan of you of, of, of all three of you. The next time that you host a a party with those uh, chocolate muffins at the stadium, yes. I will pass by to, to shake each of your <laughs> our hands in person. And I'll tell you as to the legend comments. Listen, I, you know, at home, you know, as the media was, you know, the social media world and the, and Kane's Nation was was euphoric about the moves and thanking me. Uh, my wife sees me scrolling through the social media page and is like, "Yeah, nice. That's nice, honey. Take out the garbage. Make sure to take out the garbage." That's right? what they're for. So, so it's, they, 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 she keeps me humble. She keeps me humble. humble. We all get yeah. that. We, anyway, we go you inside. Know, yeah, we all, we all, we all, we all do it. But, uh, but I look forward to meeting you guys in person. We will. Absolutely. Listen, I mean, uh, oh, we, we talked Can't about wait. that that wolf video. The guy that made that uh, since day one has been affectionately referred to as the fourth OBB. I see no problem. My Rudy isn't the fifth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our Mount Rushmore's getting out and, here. Exactly. And he already texted me and said uh, about changing you to the wolf that it's done. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Great. So I'll, I'll, yeah, so I'll send it over to yeah. you. And that same guy was giving me like, and I was like, no, you got to let the, the title organically you know, come out. You can't title it too soon. And right now, the title, it's a runaway landslide yeah. if you ask me. It's Rudy's the wolf. <laughs> Rudy's the wolf. Rudy's there the you wolf. go. <laughs> Rudy's the wolf. That's it. That's the title for episode. I appreciate it, boys. Pleasure to chat with you.